welcome to Heroes Keep Gaming. It's that time of year again, the holiday season. I'm fortunate enough to live in a place where we experience the weather synonymous with all four seasons. And while I often hear complaints about the snow, personally, I can't get enough of it. There's something so special about snow days. The snow brings with it the smell of frost in the air and an oddly comforting silence outside as everyone stays nestled indoors. I'm sure a lot of that feeling of excitement we get when there's snow on the ground goes back to our school years when it meant we could stay home and have fun all day. But even as an adult, the idea of being snowed in, physically unable to go anywhere because it isn't safe to travel, gives you a free pass to do the best thing ever. Stay inside and relax all day, with absolutely zero guilt about not going out and doing anything. It seems kind of weird, but there's this great feeling of being snowed in, bundled up all warm on your couch, while playing a video game that also takes place in a snow-covered environment. It adds an extra level of immersion as you control your in-game character through the virtual equivalent of the snowy weather you're experiencing in real life. I've watched a lot of videos on this topic over the years, and I always enjoy them, so I've been eager to make a list of my own favorite snow game. These are the five games I find myself turning to first on snow days because they give me a great sense of nostalgic comfort and fun. And don't worry, all the gameplay shown so far has been from games that didn't make the list, so I haven't spoiled any of the selections. This list is presented in order of preference, with number one being my favorite snow game of all time, so be sure to watch to the end for the dramatic conclusion. Crashing into the list at number 5 is MotorStorm Arctic Edge. After debuting as a first year PlayStation 3 title and releasing a successful sequel on the platform, the MotorStorm series was brought to Sony's handheld, the PSP, as well as their previous generation console, the PS2. As its title suggests, Arctic Edge moved the MotorStorm series away from the desert landscapes of the original and jungle locales of its sequel, Pacific Rift in favor of snow-covered racetracks. Not only did this add a fresh new look to the game, it also affected the gameplay. The vehicles handle as poorly as you'd expect over the icier parts of the landscape, though some of these sections also cool down your boost meter, providing a great trade-off of risk and reward. This cooldown feature was carried over from Pacific Rift, but in that game it was driving through pools of water that reduced your heat level. The severity of the ever-present snowstorm also fluctuates depending on the track. There are also times when avalanches occur, which best case cause the screen to shake violently, and worst case crush you in a pile of snow and potentially throw you off of a mountain. Some of these elements may sound like they'd be annoying, and they easily could have been if not implemented well, but the developers did a great job of making these feel like natural additions to the game so they increase the intensity of the races without feeling like they cheapen their competitive nature. It's really impressive how well Arctic Edge translated the gameplay from the PS3 games, which were graphically mind-blowing technical showpieces early on in the seventh console generation, to the significantly less powerful PSP and PS2. And while you no longer see hundreds of pieces of debris flying off your vehicle when you crash, the destruction is still present and impactful. And the best part of the crashes is still here. Whenever you're driving a vehicle where your driver is exposed and a crash sends them flying through the air, the ragdoll animations are as hilarious as ever.
the signature gameplay of MotorStorm, where you have the ability to boost at all times, but will overheat and explode if you use it too much, adds a great sense of strategy to the fast-paced races and never gets old. The MotorStorm series is also known for pitting different classes of vehicles against each other, so you compete against motorcycles, ATVs, cars, and trucks all in the same race. It's a feature that always seemed a bit weird like it shouldn't work competitively, but thanks to the well-balanced game design and various routes on each track that favor different classes of vehicles, it actually does work and adds a uniquely chaotic feel to the proceedings. It also affords you the benefit of trying a different type of vehicle if you're struggling to win a race, and there are some events that only allow one type of vehicle to switch things up. Events that only allow Arctic trucks, for instance, are particularly funny because the track gets so cluttered with these large vehicles and the racing is so slow paced and clunky. Another of my favorite features is that even if your vehicle explodes across the finish line, it still counts as a completion. So it kind of incentivizes you to push your boost to the absolute limit at the end of a race, even if it means finishing in a huge ball of flame. I own the game on the PSP and PS2, and you'll get almost exactly the same experience on both platforms. But I did notice more slowdown on the PS2 version, usually at specific points on tracks. And unfortunately, it has been bad enough to cause me to crash my vehicle a couple times. It's a bit surprising because the PS2 is more powerful than the PSP, but it is rendering all of the same stuff at a much higher resolution, so I guess I can see why there might be some performance issues. Still, it isn't a deal breaker. The game is very playable on PS2 and runs mostly smoothly. Ultimately, MotorStorm Arctic Edge makes this a list because it's the only car racing game I can think of that takes place entirely in wintry environments. Sure, there are snowmobile racing games, but I have yet to play any that are better than this game. One thing I haven't mentioned is that Arctic Edge provides a worthy challenge as well. As you climb the extensive ladder it becomes increasingly difficult to get the first place medals, which makes repeated attempts pretty much a given, and victory all the more rewarding once achieved. In Arctic Edge, the signature MotorStorm gameplay is as addictive as ever, even running on inferior hardware, and it has the added benefit of being playable on Sony's portable or home console. When you're looking for a vehicular racing game to play on a snow day, there's no better choice. Sliding into cover at number 4 is The Division. It took me a while to warm up to The Division, pun intended. After the mind-blowing E3 2014 trailer that made the game look way cooler than would ever be humanly possible, I was initially disappointed with the game and didn't play much of it. But after stepping away for a couple months and returning with tempered expectations, I became completely hooked on its cover-based looter-shooter gameplay. Most fans agree that the sequel improved on the formula of the first entry in nearly every way, except for one, the setting. The Division 1's snow-covered New York provides so much more atmosphere than the Division 2's open world of Washington, D.C. in the middle of summer. Its realistic recreation of wintry New York City is constantly stunning to look at and ever-changing, as its dynamic day and night cycle and fluctuating precipitation levels provide an amazing level of visual variety. There are also Christmas decorations all over the place as you'd expect that add an extra festive touch. And the minimalistic synth-filled soundtrack fits the frosty atmosphere perfectly, even evoking John Carpenter's score for The Thing at times. The Division's open world also boasts an overwhelming number of missions, side activities, and collectibles. I've already completed all of the main story missions and reached max level, and there's still so much stuff left to do. To give an idea of how much, I decided not to use fast travel when capturing this footage, and I selected a mission that was a couple kilometers away, which is pretty far to walk in game, but I figured it'd be a good way to showcase the environment. As I walked to the waypoint to start the mission, I ended up spending about an hour getting distracted by other events that popped up along the way 
before I finally got there. Which wasn't a bad thing at all, because each of these activities was a fun excuse to take cover and tactically shoot more enemies. When it comes to cover-based shooting in an open-world, snow-filled city, it doesn't get any better than The Division. Even after completing all of its main content, you can still get lost for hours in its remaining activities, which makes it a perfect game to revisit whenever you're snowed in. And slow motion diving in at number 3 is Max Payne. It's easy to forget that Max Payne is a snow game, since most of its levels take place indoors in grimy apartment complexes, seedy dive bars, demonic themed nightclubs, and laser trip mine filled office buildings. However, after the shocking prologue, which sets the revenge tale in motion, the rest of the game does take place over the course of a 3 day snowstorm in New York. And there are several outdoor sections of levels that see Max performing his signature bullet time slow mo dives while shooting dual berettas across the snow covered streets and rooftops of the city. While it doesn't take place during the holidays, I still associate the game with Christmas because I played it non stop during the Christmas break the year it was released, and it instantly became one of my favorite games. It's most famous for being the first game to include bullet time but it did so much more that I found to be just as impactful. Max's film noir narration delivered over comic book cutscenes provided a groundbreaking style that seemed completely new to the medium of video games. Outside, the mercury was falling fast. It was colder than the devil's heart, raining ice pitchforks as if the heavens were ready to fall. Everyone was running for shelter like there was no tomorrow. It didn't get any better when I got to the subway. In general, its hard-boiled, gritty tone was rarely seen in gaming up until that point. Max Payne's gunfights are fairly simplistic by today's standards, and the platforming sections have always been frustrating due to how difficult it is to just get Max to move in a straight line. I don't know about angels, but it's fear that gives men wings. But thanks to its masterful presentation, it remains a joy to revisit to this day, especially during the winter months. Get him! Gliding into the number two spot is Batman Arkham Origins. Batman Arkham Origins is a Christmas game just like Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Both take place on Christmas Eve, are full of Christmas decorations, and even include Christmas music or at least interpolations of it. It's not even up for debate. This prequel takes place eight years before the events of Arkham City. Although you play through the same open world locale of Gotham City that we explored to death in Batman Arkham City, I never saw this as a bad thing. Gotham looks drastically different than the half destroyed, cordoned off prison island it was turned into in Arkham City, and it was really cool to be able to explore it in its original state with newly accessible areas. Whenever you do encounter familiar landmarks, they provide a welcome sense of nostalgia rather than feeling like recycled assets. Origins also lets you explore the Batcave for the first time in the series and use the Batwing to fast travel to Gotham's eight different districts. While the default Origins Batsuit has become my favorite Batsuit of all time, the game also includes some great winter themed Batsuits among its DLC offerings. First we have the Red Sun costume, which is the Elseworlds Russian version of Batman complete with signature Yushenka winter hat, a natural choice for exploring snow-covered Gotham. My personal favorite of the DLC costumes is the Batsuit from the Batman Noel comic, 
which is Lee Bermejo's take on the classic Ebenezer Scrooge story, A Christmas Carol, but told with Batman characters instead. If you're familiar with the comic it's based on, it fits perfectly with the holiday theme of the game. When speaking about snow in Arkham Origins, I have to mention the story DLC, Cold Cold Heart, which takes place on New Year's Eve a week after the events of Origins, and is a very faithful adaptation of Mr. Freeze's Origins story that was told in the animated series episode Heart of Ice. It's hard to argue that this isn't the best story DLC in the entire Arkham series. In addition to telling a great story, this DLC takes the winter theme to the next level thanks to the new layer of ice coating Gotham's already snowy streets. There's so much ice, in fact, that Batman has to break out a whole new bat suit, the XE suit, or Extreme Environment suit. It's another of the coolest bat suits I've ever seen, as it builds upon the already great base Origins costume and includes some cool thermal functions that give Batman a number of new abilities. With the XE suit equipped, Batman can access areas filled with cryo vapor that would normally freeze him instantly, break through paths that have been frozen over, thaw out freeze victims who've been trapped in ice, and best of all, he can heat up his batarangs to knock down giant icicles on unsuspecting goons. When it comes to open world action adventure games, the Arkham series is my favorite to traverse and explore. Its recreation of Batman's world is so detailed that it's endlessly fun to investigate for easter eggs. And the way you're able to glide and grapple your way through the city like only Batman does is pure joy for hours on end. When you do descend onto ground level, the brilliant mix of gameplay styles including free flow combat, predator rooms for stealth gameplay, detective sequences, and searching the open world for Riddler trophies and other collectibles makes these some of the most varied and enjoyable games I've ever played. Origins is no different, and it does all of this in a festive, Christmas-themed Gotham. I've seen many Bat fans state they revisit Arkham Origins every holiday season, and it's easy to see why. Before I get to my number one favorite snow game of all time, I just want to say this is the first year I've seriously started making YouTube videos and the response so far has been awesome. My sincerest thanks to everyone who's watched the videos, dropped a comment, liked, subscribed. I just, I really appreciate it. And I'd really like to make more of these videos, but I'm still a long way from being able to monetize the channel. Once I do reach that number of subscribers and watch hours required, it will allow me to dedicate a lot more time to the writing, recording, and editing that goes into each video. So if you're enjoying this one, please subscribe. It'll go a long way to helping me make more of these videos. Thank you so much. And carving in at the number one spot is SSX3. When it comes to the SSX franchise, SSX Tricky is the most fondly remembered and seems to receive the most requests for a remake or remaster, and for good reason. But for me, SSX3 is the best entry in the series. With its tagline, Conquer the Mountain, SSX3 made the bold move of introducing an open world to the mix. Comprised of three unlockable peaks, which each contain interconnected courses complete with race and trick events, SSX3 allows you to compete in the familiar events it's known for, but you can also free ride down the entire mountain with no load times in between, which takes about 30 minutes of uninterrupted gameplay to travel from top to bottom. 
In general, SSX is one of the best racing game series because it has some of the tightest, most intuitive and responsive controls that make pulling off tricks and actually landing them feel easy and natural. It has an incredible sense of speed, remarkable track design with numerous different routes and shortcuts to take, and it must be said that the races provide a real challenge. There's no cheap rubber banding AI, just extremely well programmed AI competitors who will make you fight tooth and nail and restart events countless times to get those precious first place medals. And of course, its most instantly recognizable feature is the art direction and sound design that's brimming with some of the most personality in gaming. While SSX Tricky perfected frantic arcade action, SSX 3 also allows you to enjoy the chill, laid back aspect of snowboarding. When you need a break from chaining together insane, physically impossible tricks at breakneck speeds, you can turn off the HUD and the music and just leisurely free ride down the mountain. And this more chill mood is perfectly personified by the new DJ, DJ Atomica. SSX3's soundtrack is more of an alternative rock electronica hybrid and isn't nearly as memorable as SSX Tricky's with beatboxing host Razel. But DJ Atomica does a great job of providing fittingly laid back narration to match the style of this entry and even gives you updates on the weather conditions around the mountain to immerse you in what the snowboarding life must be like. Like many entries on this list, I have to mention just how beautiful the snowy atmosphere is brought to life in SSX3. The higher you ascend on each peak of the mountain, the more severe the weather gets, and different tracks take place at different times of day. So you'll get to experience events at midday, sunset, and after dark with different levels of snowfall. The events that take place at sunset are especially noteworthy for their gorgeous orange and purple skies and emphasis on lens flares. There are also some awesome background elements that enhance the spectacle, like birds flying next to you when you catch especially big air, fireworks blasting off in the background during certain points in races, and there are even things like helicopters crashing in the distance. These are so unobtrusive you may not even notice them your first few times down the slopes, but they do a great job of bringing them out into life without being distracting. SSX3 also introduced environmental hazards like avalanches and falling trees and used them sparingly so it rarely feels like they cheaply ruin a good run. Another welcome addition was the ability to earn in-game currency to spend in the lodge on new character customization items, attributes to increase your skills, and a ton of bonus collectibles. I can never get enough of customizing characters in video games and I was overjoyed to see this feature brought to the SSX franchise. I've only attempted snowboarding in real life one time, and even just staying upright for more than a minute without falling down was way more difficult than I expected, and constantly picking yourself up from falling gets exhausting extremely quickly. I wish I could have gotten better at it, because I love the atmosphere of being on the mountain and hanging out in the lodge, but for me SSX3 is the closest I'll ever get to living the snowboarding life. It's fortunate that it does provide the most incredible virtual version of the experience ever made, and it has yet to be outdone since its release in 2003. So there you have my top 5 favorite snow games. Remember, these are just my personal favorites from the games that I've played. I'd love to hear your favorites in the comments below, and feel free to recommend me some other snowy games I should check out the next time I find myself in some snowy weather. I hope you're all having happy holidays, wish you all a happy new year, and until next time, keep gaming. <laughs>